Right, well, uh, welcome to session 164. We're going to have a brief AGM before uh, the lecture starts. Um, so I'll run through this hopefully reasonably fast. I'll just see if I can, there we go. Um, although the agenda looks uh, very long, um, hopefully we won't have too much to say. So initially, I'd uh, like to welcome you all to, to session 164 and the AGM. I presume we don't have any apologies for absences. Margaret uh, Green did say she, as an officer, she wasn't here, won't be sorry, here tonight. Who, who's, Margaret who's Green. That? Margaret, right, okay. Margaret uh, Green said she wouldn't be here to present her SGG report if anyone had any questions, but I was to field them. Okay. Can, can I say Bill's on another Zoom tonight, so he's... Uh, not able to be with us. Okay, well, uh, hopefully you'll be able to to fill in for him. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'm sure we'll all be there to to help out if there's any questions relating to the to the website. Well, thank you very much for all the the apologies. Um, now we go on to the approval of the minutes. Has anyone got any comments or? Um, Corrections to to the minutes from from last year's uh, AGM. Yeah, they were included in the newsletter that uh, that members yep. should have received. Yeah. So, uh, in a lot of cases, it might be worth if anybody does have any comments to make, just to email uh, the uh, the next president. <laughs> that might be a way around around that. Um, now, approval of the the accounts that was also in the newsletter and the proceedings uh, well certainly in the newsletter wasn't it the accounts were in the proceedings and a, the proceedings. And a final copy was sent individually as well to members so you've had two shots at uh, okay. getting the, uh, the accounts as members so if uh, there's no questions or comments on that we will assume that they've been approved um, Venue arrangements for lectures. Now that's something that uh, will be coming up uh, in the and uh, the the next year. Um, we hopefully will be starting to to have face to face again, and we'll probably be using the Boyd Door Building, which is immediately uh, beside the Malima Building, which is what the uh, Geology Department is now called. Um, so uh, we'll no doubt uh, inform you of that uh, closer to time once we know exactly what's happening. Do yeah, you want I to say something? Some yeah, I think there's some slides behind. You've got slides for these things which you need to sort of move on to, I think. Right, okay. I looked at your slides. You've got some extra slides for each of these. The accounts are slides as well, I think. Okay, so the reports from the, the council officers. Um, I wanted to, to bring this one out in particular because it's very interesting uh, what has happened in, during the lectures uh, because normally we have maybe up to about 100 people vis uh, coming to face-to-face uh, -face lectures. Um, but with the Zoom, we, we've been able to get uh, well over 500 um, uh, viewing the, the lectures uh, afterwards. So. Uh, we're hoping that this will continue, that we'll be able to record uh, the lectures and be able to um, present these online as well as the face-to-face the -face once we get back to, to that situation. <clears throat> so that's, that's fantastic. Now, <clears throat> for the field trips, I have to say, the, I, I'll briefly say a few things highlighting some of the, uh, the good things that have happened uh, over the last year. Uh, the Islay field trip in September was very successfully run by Maggie Donnelly and led by David Webster. It was the first field trip since the pandemic uh, to take place. And we were looking forward to hopefully resuming day trips and residential trips again next year. Um, but you'll be hearing about that uh, closer to, to time uh, once, once we know what's happening with the pandemic. Um, in case any of you were worried, uh, I've been assured that the COVID rules were adhered to during the island field trip. Uh, in terms of memberships, just a reminder, please make sure that you're up to date with your subscription payments. 
as there are a few who have not yet paid for, for this session. Um, <clears throat> in the website, the website and other social media outlets continue to be very popular and make sure you visit the website and the Facebook page and Twitter account if you have one uh, to find out what's happening and perhaps learn a little bit more about geology around uh, Glasgow. The uh, Strathclyde uh, Geodiversity Group, um, uh, one consequence of the, the COVID restrictions have been that the countryside uh, uh, has been uh, ravaged with, with parties and damage has uh, occurred uh, as well as littering of sites around Glasgow. Um, the damaged perspects at the Campsie Glen car park have been replaced by SGG. Um, so that's a good thing. And the SGG and other members of the, the Geological Society have been actively promoting geology during the Scottish Geology Festival. Uh, Fossil Grove was a fantastic venue where members were able to discuss the effects of global warming during COP26 uh, and changes in atmospheric concentrations, as well as giant arthropods uh, with the public, <coughs> and also the uses of coprolites, interestingly. Uh, the, the journal uh, you will have read in the newsletters has, is moving towards an online only presence due to the huge increases in the cost of printing. Uh, the effects of this will be further considered by council in the coming year and membership will be kept informed of any developments. And sadly this year, um, we've uh, lost a number of members and uh, included in the proceedings are the obituaries for Alan Hall, Mike Harrismith and Don Bowes. Uh, Don was uh, only last year awarded honorary membership status and I have to say they will all be sadly missed. <coughs> uh, now we go on to the nominations and elections of office bearers for the council. And this is the list. Um, those who have been uh, nominated include for president Simon Cuthbert, vice president myself. Brian Bell is willing to continue as vice president. Uh, the Treasurer Ian Vetch is also uh, staying on um, as Treasurer. Uh, Meeting Secretary Ian Miller, Publication Officer Gary Hoare. We have a number of vacant ordinary membership of council positions, um, which if anybody here is willing to um, stand for that, uh, if they get in touch with the Secretary, so uh, sec at um, gsocg.org. If you email him, we'll be able to sort something out. Uh, Matthew Status, I see his name is misspelt, um, is uh, volunteered to remain as a John, uh, junior representative, although he's starting to get on a bit. Um, David Brown, um, as editor of SJG, Colin Braithwaite is uh, willing to continue as an editor and the independent examiner is Brian O'Neill. So uh, these have all been proposed and seconded. Um, so unless there is any objections, we'll assume that this is okay. Thank you. Uh, there's a, a few retirements. Anna Milligan, Elaine Shaw and Anne Ainsworth have decided to stand down as ordinary members of the council and we, we thank them for their input and devotion to geology um, as well. So uh, we're always sad to, to lose people as members of the council. <clears throat> so make sure that uh, you contact um, Walter at sec at gsocg.org if you're willing to become a member of the, of the council. Is there anything else that needs to be said? If not, I would like to say a huge thank you to all members of the council who have gone above and beyond uh, in fulfilling their duties in the face of the pandemic. In particular, I'd like to thank David Webster for the online talks, field visits um, that he organized as well as Maggie Donnelly for organizing a physical trip to Islay led by David. 
Um, I'd also like to, to thank all those involved in public engagement events for COP26 and Fossil Grove, especially Margaret Green and the whole of the SGG team. Special thanks go to Walter Semple, who supported me throughout this period and kept me right on aspects of procedure and offered valuable advice. All going well, we will soon be meeting again in person. So thank you, and uh, I believe that's me no longer president of the society. Could, so could, I, could, <laughs> could, could I intervene at this stage? Yes, of course, Walter. Uh, uh, because <coughs> I, I think uh, all of the members uh, would want to thank you very warmly, Neil, for your uh, all the work and your dedication as uh, as president <coughs> and for the uh, immense good humour uh, and uh, efficiency which you've uh, um, or, uh, conducted uh, the affairs of the society. Um, uh, I was looking back at the records and uh, I remember the uh, meeting with the Edinburgh Society that you organised at Blair Scaith, which, which you may remember, oh, yes. and, 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 and you organised a sort of competition for finding fossils. <laughs> and um, it was great fun and and uh, finished up with a really a very delightful meeting in a local hostelry where we all got to know a wee bit better our friends uh, from Edinburgh. And I also remember, I think the same year, you were, you were, you were closely associated with the bringing of Dippy, the, the, the Diplodocus, to Glasgow. And um, there have been many events like that and since then. And uh, uh, thank you very much for everything that you've done. And we look forward to continuing uh, continue to work with you in, in the future. Uh, thank you very much for those kind words, Walter. Um, I didn't want to be reminded of the Blair Scaith uh, episode. <laughs> <coughs> it's, almost, it's almost Blair Scaith gate, but it's not. <laughs> um, the, the, the problem was that uh, the competition to find fossils uh, backfired because everyone was supposed to find small fossils or crinoids, and they ended up finding big crinoids <laughs> because the, the whole story was that they... they they, they didn't grow to a great size, and uh, apparently they did. So that was a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and that was research then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was good fun. <laughs> right, thank you. Um, over to Simon, I presume. <laughs>